From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis said while the spike in COVID-19 cases is concerning, the pandemic is currently only affecting unvaccinated people. His comments came after the country recorded 100 COVID-19 cases on Saturday, the most in a single day since October. Dr. Minnis told reporters yesterday, quote, yes, the number of COVID infections are increasing, and yes, it is concerning. It demonstrates that we are still in the pandemic. The one thing the Bahamian populace must understand, we're in two pandemics. The vaccinated individuals are now out of the pandemic. The pandemic is finished for the vaccinated individuals. The unvaccinated individuals are still in the pandemic, and therefore, it's essential for us to be aggressive of which we're doing. The Bahamas recorded 401 COVID-19 cases from July 11th to July 17th. This comes as 17 additional COVID deaths were recorded on July 14th and 15th. Voter registration centers in New Providence experienced long lines and wait times yesterday as people rushed to register before the next general election. The uptick in registration comes amid increasing speculation that Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis is gearing up to call the election. On Sunday, Progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Brave Davis told reporters he expects Dr. Minnis to dissolve Parliament and announce an early election as soon as this week. Dr. Minnis brushed off those assertions yesterday, saying Mr. Davis does not set the timeline for the next election. Despite Dr. Minnis' public statements on the issue, political and government insiders similarly believe he will soon dissolve Parliament, with an election day to be announced sometime in the first three weeks of August. A man was robbed in broad daylight while making a bank deposit in the Harbor Bay shopping plaza yesterday. A bystander's video of the robbery went viral across social media. In a 38-second clip that was widely circulated, a man is seen lying on the ground being attacked by a masked man, with bystanders heard in the background saying, Let the bag go, mister, let the bag go. About 10 seconds into the video, the assailant escapes in a vehicle and flees the scene with a bag in his hand. Speaking about the incident yesterday, Assistant Superintendent of Police Audley Peters said officers were aware of the brazen robbery and were now actively searching for the man responsible. He said that video footage of the incident will assist police in their investigations and also expressed confidence that those responsible will soon be caught. The University of the Bahamas' Presidential Search Committee has selected its top three finalists for the position of UB president. The final selection will be appointed at the culmination of current President Rodney Smith's term. The finalists are Dr. Eric Rowland, Sir Anthony Selden, and Dr. Ian Strawn. The PCS began its search in November of 2020. The finalists are expected to complete their final interviews starting the week of July 26th. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, the years-long effort by state and local governments in the U.S. to force the pharmaceutical industry to help pay to fix a nationwide opioid addiction and overdose crisis took a major step forward today when lawyers for local governments announced they were on the verge of a $26 billion settlement with the nation's three biggest drug distribution companies and the drug maker Johnson & Johnson. Under the deal, Johnson & Johnson would not produce any opioids for at least a decade. And Amerisource Bergen, Cardinal Health and McKesson share prescribing information under a new system intended to stop the avalanches of pills that have arrived in some regions about a decade ago. India's excess deaths during the pandemic could be a staggering 10 times the official COVID-19 toll, likely making it modern India's worst human tragedy, according to the most comprehensive research yet on the ravages of the virus in the South Asian country. Most experts believe India's official toll of more than 414,000 dead is a vast undercount, but the government has dismissed those concerns as exaggerated and misleading. That report released today estimated excess deaths, the gap between those recorded and those that would have been expected to be 3 million to 4.7 million between January 2020 and June 2021. It said an accurate figure may prove to be elusive, but the true death toll is likely to be an order of magnitude greater than the official count. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. High pressure will remain the dominant weather feature across the country today. Boaters should be alert for possible water spout activity, while beachgoers should exercise caution due to the risk of rip currents at east and south coast beaches in the central and southeast Bahamas. Residents are still being urged to remain hydrated and limit outdoor activity due to high heat indices. For all areas, it'll be partly to mostly sunny, hot, and a bit breezy across the central 
and southeast Bahamas, with scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms mainly in the northwest Bahamas today. Mostly fair and warm, with the chance of a few passing showers or an isolated thunderstorm tonight. Small crafts caution remains in effect for the central and southeast Bahamas. Small crafts operators should also be alert for gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers or thunderstorms. Winds southeast to south at 10 to 15 knots in the northwest Bahamas and east to southeast at 15 to 20 knots in the central and southeast Bahamas. Seas 2 to 4 feet in the northwest Bahamas and 4 to 7 feet over the ocean in the central and southeast Bahamas. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 91 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 75. Today's heat index is 108. The sun will set this afternoon at 758 and will rise tomorrow morning at 632. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets, or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.